Up till now, we have said that the, for a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. And then from that, we could come up with the following. But what if we start off with one of these ones? So for example, what if we start off with number 4? Would it also be true that we could find number 3, 2, and 1? Or do we always have to start off with the opposite sides being parallel? Well, that's the point of this video. So what we're going to do, let's do a little experiment. Let's start off with number 4. So let's find two lines and make them bisect each other. So remember what bisect means. It means that the second line I draw has to cut this line in half. Like that. And so what we can say is that this half is exactly the same as that half, and that half is going to be the same as that half. So we've, we've, we've started off by taking two lines that bisect. Now let's quickly complete the figure. And so we end up with something like that. It doesn't look perfect, I know, but remember, I've just, I'm just doing a freehand sketch over here. But it's, a, it's the properties that count. Many times in a test, it won't be drawn according to scale. Okay, so what we have is a figure where the diagonals bisect. It's not a parallelogram just yet. We can't say that, okay? Because for it to be a parallelogram, the following has to be true. What we've shown in the previous videos is that if the opposite sides are parallel, then we can work out all of these using congruency. But the point of this video is to start with the diagonals and see if we can work backwards to make it a parallelogram. Let's see if that's even mathematically possible. And so to be able to work with this shape, we're going to have to give it some letters. And the key thing with all of these is congruency, because if we could prove certain triangles are equal, then we could extract some important information. Now let me just fix this little line that's floating in the middle of nowhere. There we go. So we could, I mean, there's no exact science to this or no exact maths, but you can just choose two triangles. So let's choose the following two and let's prove them congruent and let's see what we can get from that. So we could say in triangle A, B, E, I'm just choosing any order and triangle E, C, D. So let, that's just telling the teacher which triangles you're working in. Let's see what we can find as being the same. So we can see that the following, these two are the same. AE and EC because those lines are like that. So we can say AE is equal to EC and that was given, right? We knew that from the beginning. Next, we could say that EB is the same as ED and that's also given. These two angles would be the same. So let's call that E1. Pretend that the E1 and the E2 were there in the beginning. That's my bad. So we can say E1 is going to be equal to E2 and that's going to be vertically opposite angles. So we say vert op angles. And so I'm just going to move it over here because now we have three things. So we can say therefore triangle A, B, E is going to be congruent. So we, so we use three lines to triangle. Now we need to make sure we get the order of the second part right. So we know that AE is the same as EC. And so that means that A and C can go together. So this is A. So we'll start this triangle with C. Then B is obviously going to go with D over there, and then E1 is going to go with E2, so we can just say E like that. And the reason for this is going to be side, angle, side, because we found two sides over there and over there, and an angle. But Kevin, can't we only use that if the angle is in between? Well, the angle is in between. I'll show you. In this triangle over here, we found we used those two sides over there, and we used this angle. So is that angle in between? Well, yes, it is. And in this triangle over here, we used those two sides there, and the angle that we used was in between. And so side angle side is valid. So in summary, we have just proved that this triangle over here is congruent to this triangle over here. And so let's see what important information we can get from that. Well, that means that AB is going to be the same as DC. And if we look over here at the order that we've chosen, well, it means that angle A goes with angle C. So that means A is going to go with angle C. And so we need to pause right there because have a look at this. Can you spot the Z? Aha. But now let me explain. We know that these two angles are the same. And so that means that these two sides are going to be parallel. Because if we know that these two are parallel, then it means that these two corner angles are the same. But the reverse is also true. If we know that they, the corner angles are equal, then we can say that the sides are parallel. And so moving along, we know that angle B, well, that's going to go with angle D. And that is all for the, those two triangles. Now, what if we had to prove the following two triangles congruent as well? 
Well, that would be super easy to do because what we would be able to say is that AE is the same as EC. Now, I'm not going to go write all this out just to save you a little bit of time. And we could also say that BE is the same as ED. And then we could say, and let's pretend that there was a 3 and a 4 here. We could say that E3 was the same as E4 because of vertically opposite angles. And so those two triangles would be exactly the same due to side angle side. And so what that would mean is that this side would be exactly the same as this side over here. What we would have also found would be that this angle would be the same as this angle, and that would have allowed us to use reverse parallel lines again due to the following z. And so we could say that these two sides are parallel. And then we also would have been able to say that this angle is the same as that angle. So let's just stop right over here. We have discovered everything over here. So we already knew that they would, the diagonals could bisect. The opposite sides are now parallel. The opposite sides are now equal. The opposite angles are equal. Check this out. Here's a, a green and a purple, and here's a green and a purple. Here's a red and a blue, and here's a red and a blue. And so we can say that. And so because all of these are true, it's a parallelogram. But the amazing thing is, is that all we started out with was the following. We simply started out with two diagonal lines that bisected each other. And from that, we constructed a four-sided shape, did a whole lot of congruency, and proved that all of these four properties existed. And so we could say that it's a parallelogram. And so the summary of this whole video is that up till now, we have always started with having opposite sides parallel. But you could start off with having the diagonals bisecting each other, and you would prove that it's still a parallelogram. So in summary, if you ever have a four-sided shape that has diagonals which are bisecting, then automatically you can say it's a parallelogram. You don't only have to have the sides being parallel first. You can start off with diagonal lines and work your way backwards to prove that the whole shape would be a parallelogram.